singing of a sparrow makes a joyful sound. It's a song of strength and endurance, giving me assurance that Jesus is near when hope cannot be found. Well, sometimes I am strong, oh, when others I am weak. It's the struggle to become what I really need to be. I worry about tomorrow until I see the sparrow and I'm reminded of the promise. He'll take care of me. Well, the sparrow never worries where to get supplies. He just flies until he finds him under God's watchful eye. And if the Lord can know so closely the single pathways of a bird, Will he not protect his children from the soul's sinful world? Well, sometimes I am strong, oh, but others I am weak. It's the struggle to become what I really need to be. I worry about tomorrow until I see the sparrow and I'm reminded of the promise he'll take care of me Amen, just one verse in here tonight uh, Psalm 25-4 Psalm 25-4 Psalm 25.4 The psalmist here writing says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. For a heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this place and uh, calling us uh, into your family and, and uh, uh, calling us into your grace. And we thank you for a chance to sing your praises and to be able to open your word, Lord. We pray that you help us to take from it that which you have us to have, that uh, we may walk closer to you. But we pray this in your Son Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Will this verse sound familiar? It should. It should. Megan, does it sound but Megan's still back there? She hiding somewhere. I saw her over. Oh, okay. I got up to preach and she left. So, uh, but, uh, should sound familiar, and, and I'm not trying to rehash Bible school, but this was the central verse of Bible school. You know, the text um, each night was taken out of the Gospels uh, or out of Acts because it talked about Peter, the narrative was around Peter, like maybe uh, Peter leaving his fishing to become a fisher of men, and uh, when Jesus bid him to come out to him on the water and he walked on the water and and um and acts out of uh about peter boldly witnessing regardless of beatings and imprisonment and all of that stuff and um peter uh witnessing and meeting with cornelius the italian man the gentile who uh, was unclean but uh lord led him in a path along that ways and and, and so this was the verse of bible school and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, this verse has kind of stuck with me. And, um, and I don't know if, uh, if you were here for Bible school any of the nights of the lessons, but um, I got something out of Bible school that nobody else did. Um, the, the thoughts and uh, the, the scripture behind it and all that. And, and I keep going back to this verse. But just simple verse. The, the psalmist here is, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Simple thought. And, you know, the, the Psalms, some, most were written by David, attributed to David, and this is one that was attributed to him. And in his latter days, 
Um, Because in this chapter, he'll talk about when he was young and all that stuff. So um, a psalm by an older David. And if you go back to the very first chapter of Psalm, um, very short chapter, um, the very first verse out of Psalms, uh, David said this, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now I like that. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And then just at the end of that same chapter, uh, verse 6, again, that was a short chapter, Psalm chapter 1, uh, David said this, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know, uh, David had a had large family. David had a lot of family trouble, but one of his sons would go on to become the king of Israel, the wisest man, uh, uh, Solomon. And in Proverbs, Solomon wrote this in uh, Proverbs 16, verse 25. He said, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. We know that, right? But the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that seems right to Emmett. There's a way that seems right to Patty. There's a way that seems right to Raymond. There's a way that seems right to me. And there's a way that seems right to you. And we're all folks here in the house of God. But my way leads to death and destruction. My, your way leads to death and destruction. There's a way that seems right to us. But the end thereof is ways of destruction. And you know, it's, it, it's not just uh, Proverbs 16. Three times in uh, Proverbs, um, uh, Solomon would write this. Another time, I think it's chapter 14, it's verbatim the same exact verse. Did they just duplicate? Well, maybe it's important. There's a way that seems right to you. There's a way that seems right to me. But the end thereof is the ways of death. You know, uh, anything of this flesh, my... My mind, though I'm saved, if you dig down into my mind, you'll find the earthly, fleshly, carnal things. But it's the mind of Christ that we seek after, that whom we seek to follow after. Uh, not our ways, but His way. And this whole life that we're on, every day, there's forks in the road, bends around this way. You know, do I go this way? Do I go that way? And sometimes it seems like an easy decision. Sometimes it's a big decision. But I, I truly believe that, that God is, is sovereign in every aspect of our life and in every decision that we make. And, you know, we need to separate ourselves from the anti-biblical way of living. We need to separate ourselves from the ungodly as... as uh, we read just a second ago out of one one. Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, or in one six, where he said, "The way of the ungodly shall perish." Uh, but we need to rest in following the utter dependence of God's word and God Himself, and follow after Him. But the psalmist here, well, you can look at this short little verse and assume two things out of this. One is that he assumes God has a specific way for him. That God has a specific path chosen for David here. And the other thing is that uh, the psalmist here will assume that God's going to show him which way to go. God's prepared to show him the path that, that he should go. But, but if we look at that, if God has a specific path, if God has a specific plan, we have to really realize, and it's hard to wrap our heads around this, is um, God is interested in our day-to-day -day life. Think about that for a second. I, I guess it was Sunday night. I was talking about, you know, you can't get an audience with the president, but, but, but we have God, uh, you know, a personal relationship with him. But think about that. God is interested in our day-to-day -day life. Now, I'm not trying to be ugly here, but this, you know, honestly, you got to be careful who you ask. Hey, what's been going on with you? Because they might tell you, and they might not stop. And then after after a minute or two, I, I look. I, I don't say this with pride. I say this as a mark against myself. I have a tendency to ask somebody a question, and as soon as I ask the question, I quit listening. You know, I, I'll ask Allison a question, she'll start talking. I don't know. Either. You know, 
And I, I hate to say this, and I don't consider myself a selfish person, I guess, in the ways of the world, but we're all really self-centered. We are. And you know, if if, uh, if if you came up to me talking about me, I'd probably listen. <laughs> if you talk about you, everything you did that day, I'm like, mm -hmm, this guy. Allison knows when I quit listening, because then I'm okay, yeah, sounds good, all right. You know, Miss Miss Lasker knew exactly when to quit talking to me because she said she knew when I quit listening. But and I, I I don't say that with pride, you know. And there was a country song. I hated this country song when it came out, but uh, and it, I, I say new, but it's new to me like anything twenty years and younger. Than you. <laughs> but but um, the song was I want to talk about me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You that? I want to talk about me. Because that's what interests us. But God is into our words day to day life. He probably cares more about our day to day life than you care about your spouse's day to day life or, or, or this or that or whatever. I mean, every decision we make, and we have to remember that Romans 8 28 is a very true verse that He's working all things for our good. Every intricate detail of our life, you know, we should invest in following Him. Following his way. And that question uh, uh, or uh, the, the statement that the psalmist made here should be the question that we always ask where he said, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy path. The question in everything we do, what is the way of the Lord? What is the path I need to take? I mean, in every little thing that we do, you know, um, uh, there's nothing I believe that happens without his uh sovereign will uh the bible says in him all things consist the smallest detail he takes care of you realize god has everything worked out everything worked out i mean you think about this every little granule of sand on the beach he's got a purpose for you know if you go down into the mariana trench seven miles below the surface of the ocean deeper than the uh empire state building is tall taller than mount everest or deeper than mount everest is is tall. You'll go down there and find microorganisms and micro plant life. And why? What's the purpose of it down there? I don't know, but God had every detail worked out. You know, the Hubble telescope only gives us a little inkling of a picture into outer space. But in the furthest planet, wherever that is, whether there's whether it's made up of sand or rock or ice crystals, whatever, He's got a purpose for every little one of those. Why? I don't know, but God has every detail and everything worked out. And I love, uh, Denise led the song, Wonderful Peace, and the peace that we can have in knowing, hey, things stink right now, yeah. or they seem to, but God got it all worked out. Or, or as JJ saying, you know, if the Lord can know so closely the simple pathway of a bird, will he not protect his children from this old sinful world? Is that not an awesome thought? I mean, life may stink from time to time. It, it does. I mean, I have to tell middle schoolers that all the time. Life stinks sometimes. You know, we deal with it. We, we move on. and you know. But but I have to tell myself that. Um, he's got everything taken care of, all of that. And, and, you know, sometimes we think that we're just wandering around here, just floating dust in the wind. But God has a purpose and a path and a plan for you. And the big thing is, are we following it or are we following the world? Are we following our way? There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. Or, or, or if we're following the, uh, or we're walking after the counsel of the ungodly, um, you, you know, that, that, uh, the, those perish is what the Bible tells us as far as that goes. You know, we, we look at that and, and, I believe pe people always act like the will of God is such a mystery. And, and I get that. I mean, I can't sit there and tell you the moment he's coming back. But by faith and by studying the word of God, we know he's coming back soon. I mean, we know that. I mean, you know, when um, Allison goes to the store, I don't know exactly when she's coming back, but I know she's coming back. Or at least I assume she is, you know. Um, it's, but... The same thing with the Lord. I don't know the moment he's coming back, but the word tells us he is and, and he's going to. You know, I don't know exactly how this happens, but the Lord has called us all under the same salvation. 
He's called us all by His grace. That's a good starting place right there. And once we've been called by His grace and into His work, He's got a purpose for all of us. We're, we are one body made up of many members of which He is the head of the church. You know, whether we're the feet, whether we're the mouth, whether we're the whatever, the hands, you know, God has a purpose for all of us. And that ought to make you feel pretty special on your most unimportant, depressing day. That God has a purpose a plan for us and everything that we do and people say well how do I know what God wants in my life ask him read his word you study his word he gave us his word for a reason he gave us the power of prayer Denise led that one too just a little while ago um, prayer bells of heaven amen prayer and studying his word it's just like Tommy mentioned ways few services ago. I use Waze all the time. A lot of you probably use that or some sort of GPS. Um, if I don't know where I'm going, first thing I do is I, I look at that. All right? I say, no, they can pull out the map, but, but, but with that, it says, you know, 500 feet, turn right. If I didn't know where I was, how would I know that? If we don't know where we're supposed to head in this life, why are we not looking at the source? Why are we not reading the source or seeking the source. You know, if we're going on some long trip, the very first thing for what vacation, business trip, whatever, very first thing we need to know, where are we going? If you don't know where you're going, you know, you're not going to get there. And two, how do we know we're going the right way? How do we know that we're we're getting whether we're going to let's take the ladies and went to Pigeon Forge. If we're heading to Pigeon Forge and we're on 65 South, we're going the wrong way. And how do we know that unless we're looking at signs or, or welcome to Florida or something like that? You know, uh, if, we, if we're not looking at the signs, we don't see it. Well, that's why we need to know his word. You know, we'll fall to any fly-by-night idea and doctrine unless we study his word. God has a plan for us, and we need to know exactly what it is by being close to him, by studying, by, by prayer. You know, uh, God never promised that he reveal every little thing to us while we're on this earth that we know every little detail. We don't understand some things until after they happen. You know, the Bible says we see through a glass darkly, but, you know, I believe according to his word, he promised that he would lead and direct our paths if we'll follow him. You know, that, that's what we need to do, and we can take joy in any circumstance knowing that if we will just simply follow him, we're all right. You know, and, and it may lead through some rough waters. It may lead uh, through uh, some deep, dark valleys. It may lead through whatever. But we know that, that following him, everything's going to be better in the long run anyway. You know, I, I, I've told this in Sunday school, and I mean this as a little child. I, I remember this. And, you know, you try to think back to what your earliest memories are. And... I don't know that I can think of much of an earlier memory than this, but I remember being in my Aunt Pat's house in Columbia, when she's still alive. And she was a big smoker when I was young. She quit smoking after a while. But I remember being in her kitchen and her, that's when everybody smoked in the house. You know, nobody thought anything about it then. They're, you know, uh, you just lit a cigarette in somebody's house. Like, like, like you know. Um, but anyway. And I remember she had that cigarette sitting on a little ashtray on the kitchen counter. And that flame looked so, that or light, whatever you call it then, you know, looked so pretty. And I wanted to touch it so bad. And she said, don't touch that cigarette, it'll burn. And I remember I touched the cigarette and it burned. And, and I, don't, I don't know why I remember that. that. That's just like one of the earliest things I remember. Now, I promise y'all wasn't like 15 when I did that. <laughs> but I mean, I was young when I did that. But since then, I don't walk up to flames and touch them anymore. You know, I learned the hard way. But wouldn't it have just been easier had I just listened and not done it? Wouldn't it have been easier if we just followed what the Lord wants us to do instead of getting so wrapped up in what we want? You know, I'll just be as transparent as I can be. And I think I'm a pretty transparent person. You know, I'll tell about you that everyone knows this about. But, you know, Bible school was kind of a rough week for me. And and I've, I've got 
over that. You know, some things were supposed to happen a certain way would work and all that. They didn't quite work that way. The dominoes didn't fall the way they were supposed to in my mind. You know, and and on Thursday night of that week is in my mind would blank on the song that y'all sang in Bible school. And her her mind would blank too. But but on, you're all I need. Um, but on him directing the paths and being all that we need to begin with. And I was a little bitter. I, I was quite bitter. And I think I still have moments of bitterness that will seep up. <laughs> and, I, and, and that's my problem, not the Lord's problem. But God's worked out everything perfectly. Why, why am I bitter? Why am I worried about it? Because you know what? When, when the door was closed for Paul to go to Asia, Paul went another way. And here we are sitting today, saved by the grace of God because God had a sovereign plan. God had a sovereign plan in everything we do. Are we following his path? Or are we following your own path? Are we following the path of the world that leads to destruction? Where folks perish. There's a way that seemed right unto man, but the end thereof is death. You know, that, that verse there says, show me thy ways, teach me, show me thy paths, teach me thy ways. You know, I believe that we can learn a lot from the Lord if we'll just learn a lot from him. If we'll just listen. And that means, hey, studying his word, coming to his house, being here, being in prayer, studying in our own time. I mean, how else will we know where to go unless we look at the map? I mean, so the house will we know unless we look at his map, study it. I mean, let's say it again. Next time we, we're here, we'll be homecoming and the kickoff of our revival. So between now and then, let's be much in prayer. Let, let's, let's invite some folks. You don't even have to get on the phone like we used to. You just send them a text and, uh, and, and, uh, or something like that. It, it, life is easy in some way. But, uh, but let, let's be invited. What was we say in verse song? There is a